a thread by Soul War. Deaths overnight in Kenosha, as I predicted. Armed militias, residents, and Antifa BLM rioters clashed overnight, resulting in two shooting deaths and one serious injury. The two shootings happened closely together and appear to have been committed by the same shooter just moments apart. The shooter is tentatively identified as 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse, who claimed he was there in support of BLM and to protect property. Anybody else see the approaching train wreck? He may have shot an Antifa rioter in the head as that rioter tried to destroy vehicles. In this video, it's clear Rittenhouse was there at the scene of the shooting, but I can't confirm if he fired the fatal shot. Also, I hear two distinct weapons being fired. Did the headshot guy lose a gunfight? Live streaming journalist CJ was nearby and ran toward the initial gunshots. You see Rittenhouse running past him. In Drew's video, he was on his cell phone, rumored, telling 911 he'd just shot someone, then he runs off. A mob of enraged BLM and Antifa is chasing him, some armed. I was monitoring CJ's stream when this happened. 50,000 plus people saw it live as well. Rittenhouse is chased down, stumbles, or is hit, and then he shoots at those trying to disarm him. Two are hit, one fatally. Warning, what follows is graphic. Link in the thread. I believe that Elijah Schaefer's take is correct. Rittenhouse was running to turn himself in when a mob attacked him. Several of the people that tried to disarm him were also armed, such as this man who Rittenhouse shot through the upper arm. You can see that he's holding a pistol. Just moments before the first fatal shooting, this is what rioters were doing at the scene, smashing cars in a car lot. It seems a pissing contest quickly escalated into gunfire between militia determined to put out fires, prevent vandalism, and Antifa. Now, let's see if we can blow this up for you a little bit. This is what these scumbags were doing, so whatever. As they always do, the Marxist swine immediately cast the shooter as a white supremacist running amok against their, quote, peaceful protest. Mainstream media will work hard to frame what happened to cast Antifa as blameless. Elijah Schaefer tells us the truth from Elijah Schaefer. The Kenosha riot shooter was offering medical help to BLM rioters earlier in the night. So the whole premise that he was a white supremacist or the shooting took place due to political disagreements became more difficult to prove. Also, he stated why he was armed and there. Tim Poole was on fire this morning. He was very, very angry at what he sees as a completely avoidable loss of life, and I utterly agree with him. But Tim is being entirely too kind to the Democrat mayors and governors. He frames them as weak or incompetent. No, Tim. I'm sorry, dude. It's much worse than that, and eventually even you will have to come face to face with what they're doing. The Algerian strategy, hat tip Carlos Osuita. What these Democrat governors and mayors are doing is deliberate. And last night's carnage is exactly what they want. The implicit threat is going to grow now. It will not be denied. I have stated their strategy in recent threads become ungovernable. How did people in these blue states think this would end? We are now on a precipice. What happens in the next 48 hours is going to be critical. As the mainstream media begins crowing, if America looks like this now, how much worse will it be if Trump's reelected? Vote Biden to make the chaos go away. We cannot allow them to get away with this. They will try to drown out the RNC's positive message with their negative one. A negative message they created and their DNC masters have set the stage for, for months, is now unfolding before our tired and bloodshot eyes. I'm sure these people are pissed off. It took 90 fucking nights to get here. By rights, if we were the deplorables, as they claim, why so long? I expect action 
from these three men, Barr, Trump, Esper, over the next 48 hours, overt, covert, I don't freaking care. I understand the president is concerned about federalism and legacy, but now the Democrats are, start, are going to start racking up the body count so fast it'll make you vomit. 32 dead and counting. So far, President Trump has been very careful and considerate of states' rights and federal boundaries. I'm praying hard for some May 30th magic and some of that Chaz Chop mojo to hit Kenosha, Wisconsin tonight. I think the teams are already there as last night had no systemic arson. I called what the Democrats and their Marxist zombie hordes have wrought in 90 nights of rioting a perfect storm. Believe me when I say the 30 dead from the riots in the previous 89 nights will seem like a fond memory by mid-September if something serious doesn't happen now. If this isn't curtailed quickly, we could be seeing 50 dead by next week, not counting the original 30. This is what the Democrats have carefully and diabolically fomented over the last three months. I flat out consider these Democrat governors and mayors a direct threat to national security. From Michael Flynn, we have an army of digital soldiers. This was irregular warfare at its finest in politics. We have what we call here citizen journalists because the journalists we have in our media did a disservice to themselves. Adding insult to injury, the more we learn of Jacob Blake, the more odious the feel of all the actions taken in his name. George Floyd's death was actually a tragedy. This shitbag isn't even dead. Paralyzed? Good. Hope his raping days are over. Mainstream media is lying overtime on this. Here comes the framing, editing, and lying storytelling to cast this violent thug as an innocent victim. Not the most often played YouTube video, even the mo now the most often played YouTube video carefully places the captions to hide the fact that Blake was armed with a knife, a deadly fighting knife called a karambit. BLM and Antifa do not care. He had an arrest warrant for a felony sex crime. Doesn't matter. He violently resisted arrest and fought with officers. Doesn't matter. He was armed with a knife and reached into his vehicle. Doesn't matter. Nothing matters but the excuse they're given to riot. Mainstream media will always comply. As all the facts come out, the mob doesn't miss a beat. They are now rioting, burning, and looting in the name of a violent rapist who resisted arrest and forced the police to paralyze him. Years from now, every single one of these rioters will be tainted and tied to this dirtbag. Update. The man shot in the head is wearing the red shirt confronting militia, saying, shoot me, N-word. Later, he chases the shooter and throws a Molotov cocktail at him before taking the shot to the head. Actual video of him confronting a group of militia, including his killer. From Julio Rosas, rioters are getting into confrontations with armed citizens who are out there to prevent looting and destruction of businesses. Let's see if we can check this out. All right, anyway, it's linked in the description. MSM is pushing hard right now to cast the shooter as a Trump-supporting white supremacist. Every fact I've shown, they will attempt to bury. Concern trolls and Wu Mao operatives, Chinese government operatives, will descend posing as regular Americans to push that and sow dissent. Don't allow it. The Democrats have worked hard to open a terrible door. President Trump must move swiftly to close it. This is a perilous moment for our republic. Do not engage. Those calling for confrontation are no friend to the nation or the American people. A 17-year-old kid who decided to engage now has two deaths on his soul, justifiable or not. He'll have to live with it. Rioters right now are tying themselves to infamy and a criminality they're convinced they'll never have to pay for. Wrong. Why has Operation Legend been so effective? The feds already know who they're looking for and have a plethora of charges waiting for them. Smart people have seen the wind change and faded. This is why the number arrested during Legend is a thousand and plus so quickly, and it's only going to build and build. Game over, man. 
I await the next 48 hours with trepidation and hope. I obviously want hope to win out. Stay tuned, America. Thanks for listening. And remember, I will be the greatest president that God ever created.